Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Alexandra and in today's video, I am going to be DIYing that birdcage pendant light that everyone asks me about. This is gonna be a fun one, so let's get started. Before we get started, I wanna give a huge shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. You guys know that I work with Squarespace a lot and it's because my own website is built on Squarespace and it's a brand that I really love and trust. So if you are looking to start a small business or share your story through a blog, I would highly recommend Squarespace to do so. The thing that draws me to them most is their beautiful templates and their no fuss setup and design process. So for me as a small business owner, I don't have time to constantly update my website, which is why I love the drag and drop system that they have. It's really very user friendly and the templates are already so beautifully designed and curated that all you have to do is customize it. And something I find really helpful is that email campaigns and analytics are all in the back end of my website. So when I send out a virtual design package that someone has bought, I do that all through Squarespace through their email marketing campaign. If you guys are feeling inspired to start a store or a blog and don't know where to start, go to Squarespace, take a browse at their templates, and I guarantee you'll feel at least a little inspired. Head to squarespace.com slash Alexandra Gator to start your free trial, and then use my code, which will be on screen and in the description box to get 10% off your first website or domain. A little background on this light before we begin. This light hangs in my living room, and you guys don't even know the amount of questions and comments I get asking me where it's from. The only problem is you cannot find this exact light anywhere anymore because the company no longer exists. Let me explain. So a few years ago when I worked at Chatelet Magazine, I came across this light somewhere online and I really loved it. And I pitched it to the editor in chief. Um, I wanted to put it on our home opener page. So I got in touch with the company. I think they were based in Sweden and we needed to photograph the light. So they sent me a light that had been damaged. Nothing was really wrong with it. There was like a scratch on it, so they couldn't sell it. They were like, we're gonna send you the light so you can photograph it. And it arrived, it was beautiful. So we photographed the light, published it in the magazine. The same month that this light was published in the Chatelaine home section, it was also featured in another design magazine in someone's kitchen. Here I was thinking that I, you know, had discovered something really unique and special, and clearly the trend was kind of catching on and other people were noticing this light. So after I got let go from the magazine, I took the light with me, I was like, one of my most prized possessions. I just thought it was so quirky and unique. I hung it in my bedroom at my parents' house. And then when I moved to the treehouse apartment, I hung it in the living room and that's where it lives now. So the issue is that the company that created this light no longer exists. You type in their name on Etsy, it says store and item no longer available. Bottom line is, is that they don't sell this light anymore. So I can never link it when people ask me, where is this light from? So I thought that the best that I could do was try and recreate this light myself. There's tons of kits online, but those are really expensive. And I thought, you know what? I think I could do like a budget friendly option. So here we go, a DIY version of the light that everyone asks me about. So for this DIY, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. It's super, super simple, but you're going to need two people. So I invited along my friend Chico, who you guys know and love to help with this DIY and just be an extra set of hands. So the things you will need for this DIY are chicken wire. You're gonna need a thrifted light. I would recommend thrifting an Ikea light and I'll tell you why in a minute. You're also gonna need a plug-in or hardwire pendant cord. These are really easy to find. You can get them on Amazon. I will link all of the supplies that we got down below. You're also gonna need some wire cutters or tin snips, anything that's going to cut through chicken wire. You're also gonna need some twigs and some birds from the dollar store. Pretty simple. Oh, and the most important part, you're going to need some zip ties and some clamps or something to hold the chicken wire down on 
your DIY table. Let's get started with step one. We thrifted this Ikea light for $20. And the reason I feel like it's great to get a thrifted light from Ikea is because a lot of the times their drum pendants have an outside shade that's clipped on to the lampshade cage. When I was researching supplies we would need for this DIY, I was finding that lamp cages, so basically just like the top and the bottom of the pendant, were really expensive. You can find a lot of them on Etsy, but they're like $150, $75, like really, really expensive. And I thought there has to be a more budget-friendly alternative. So you wanna clip the light off, you'll see you're left with the cage in two pieces, and you wanna keep the outside part because this is how you're going to measure how much chicken wire you're gonna need. So we just laid the outside of the lamp on the table, we put the chicken wire on top, and we clamped either side. Once you've got your measurements in place, you wanna start cutting the chicken wire. So we bent it in half and then started clipping through that way. It's pretty simple, but like it made me sweat a little bit. So this is really why you need two people. As you can see, Chico's kind of opening the chicken wire and I'm cutting through it. So once you've got your chicken wire cut to the correct size, you wanna start rolling it on top of your light frame. Okay, so you guys, this is looking so, so good already and it just took some zip ties. Originally, we were gonna cut the zip ties and use wire to connect it. These work amazing and I think once we clip the zip ties, you won't even really notice because we're going to spray paint this whole frame gold. And I would highly recommend doing this rather than wire. Um, super easy and really cost effective too. The method to this is you want to make sure that you're zip tying the chicken wire to the frame diagonally. You want to do a diagonal so it's really tight and your frame and your chicken wire don't move. So before we move on to the bottom side, zip tying the bottom to the chicken wire, we're actually going to use a gauge wire to sew up the back of the light. So it's where the two pieces of chicken wire meet. We're basically trying to sew that up so it doesn't come apart. We're using a really thin gauge wire for this and we're basically twisting the wire so it looks like a twist tie. You're basically like twist tying the back together. And then I'm cutting off the excess with the same wire cutters and you don't really notice that this is sewn up at the back. It looks really clean. And then we're gonna do the same thing at the bottom. So for the, the bottom part of the frame, we are just zip tying this all the way around until you have this awesome light. Whoa, this is gonna be freaking epic. I think we should put this in our entryway. Okay, so we've sewn up the back of the light and now it's time to add the next ring. So we did one, two, three, four, Five. And we're basically gonna do the exact same thing that we did on this side, we're just gonna zip tie it again. Now it's time to spray paint the whole thing gold. You want a full can of gold spray paint for this because you're gonna need a couple coats. I feel like some of you are gonna ask, where are you? And what are you doing in this abandoned warehouse? It's not abandoned. Um, it's currently being made into a big art studio, so there's different units that are being renovated. Ours just happens to be the first one um, that's done, so. We're in here early and waiting for all of our other all of our other friends to join us. So while the light is drying, I wanted to talk about different ways you could hang this. Because what we've done is actually just replace the pendant light we had already hung in the entryway with this shade. But I did buy a plug-in cord that I want to show you guys. So originally I bought this plug-in pendant cord from Amazon, I think. I, liked how it kind of looks like butcher's twine. I thought it went with the rustic theme of the birds. But then I realized, actually, I wanna hang this up in the entryway and we already had something hardwired into the ceiling. We just replaced the shade we had before with this new birdcage pendant shade and it looks awesome. But if you are someone who rents and maybe wants to make a smaller version of this light, I would suggest going with a plug-in cord just like this one. The next step is to outfit your pendant light with some twigs and some birds. You can get both of these items at the dollar store for like under $5 each. I just got a bunch of branches. It came in like a little tied thing with flowers. I got rid of that. And I just picked out a variety of branches from the bundle and began to place them in the light. Depending on your budget, you could spend more here or less. You could get more lifelike birds. I think these dollar store ones look great. And because it's hanging kind of high up, you don't really notice like the intricate details of them. So now it's up, it's hung. 
And I would recommend hanging the light before you put the birds and the twigs in because this is a very delicate part. So what I would recommend is getting clip-on birds because that way you can put the branches in the light first and then clip the birds onto the branches. Sometimes the dollar store doesn't sell the birds with the clips. So in that case, you're gonna have to hot glue gun the birds to the branches or I guess you would hot glue gun clips to the birds. In my case, I wanted to put the branches in first just to get a feel of where they were all gonna go and what looked best. So I did that and then I just went in with my birds and clipped them on to the branches. Of course, I also added in a bulb. I used um, a really big Edison style bulb. I think it looks really good. And you guys, I, I'm like, side-eyeing it because it's hanging up the entryway. I can't believe that we DIY'd this. And you guys are probably wondering how much this light costs to DIY. And I'm going to tell you. Are you guys ready? We spent under $75 for this beautiful, beautiful light that so many of you ask about. Let's take a look at the original one hanging in my living room. And now let's take a look at the one in our office entryway that we DIY'd. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you recreate this light yourselves. Make sure you DM me at Alexandra Gator on Instagram if you do to share your own light creations. And a huge shout out to Squarespace again for sponsoring this episode. Make sure you use my code for 10% off your first website or domain. And as always, I will see you guys next week. Bye.